If you use Obsidian Leaflet, have you noticed over time your notes become harder and harder to manage? Or potentially, if you use the Obsidian Syncs feature, you may have noticed that Sync might have messed up, and Obsidian Leaflet hasn't actually been able to sync correctly, and you've lost all your data. Not good at all. It's made me look back at Leaflet and see what we can do to actually rectify some of these issues. And with the help of a community member, we found a way that we can actually keep the information within the notes where the information belongs in the first place. So if anything does go wrong in the future, all the information you need is within your notes, so we don't run into that problem. If you're new here, my name's Kieran, and I work a lot within Obsidian and a lot of the tabletop RPG space. And I'm going to show you how all this works. Now, we're going to be working in my tabletop RPG vault, which is basically a vault that I've developed for tabletop RPG players or more specifically gems, where you can get a better idea of how Obsidian work, show a lot of the functionality and how things come together. If you are interested, I'll leave a link in the top right of the screen now, where you can find a link to that. However, for this information of what I'm going to do and the markdown that goes along with this, you'll be able to find that in the post that will be in the down in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's jump in and I'll show you what we're doing. Alrighty, so here we are in the template bowl. As I was saying before, I've got an entire video on this, so if you want to find out more about that, please go check out that video. However, right now, I'm just going to go over the basics, which being, we need to have to get Leaflet first, so we can actually start using it. So if you're using this for the first time, all you want to do is go to the bottom left, where you'll find a little cog, which I'm actually covering at the moment, and we can go ahead and find our settings. We want to go to the community plugin section, where we can actually get a bunch of things the community have made, make our obsidian vaults even better first time here it might ask you do you want to turn this on go ahead and enable it it basically just means that you're allowing this to basically find all the different kind of plugins we're going to go into browse and then we want to search for leaflet if i can spell leaflet and basically you want to click on install here and enable it and then that'll basically give you everything that you need to get going for this video now, there's a bunch of stuff in here where you can actually read through and find out what it actually does if you want to find out more about Leaflet. And you can even go into the documentation, which is available there as well, which gives you even more information. However, I'm going to go over the bits that you need to know for today, so don't worry too much about that. Now, with this being my template vault, it means I've got a bunch of things already set up, so I don't have to set stuff up every single time I need new stuff. So, that being said, if we go to my templates folder, and then move down until we get to our settlements. I can have an entire template which is set up for my settlements for my tabletop RPG games. Now there's a bunch of stuff in here which we're not going to cover today. As I said, this isn't what that's all about. It's mainly here for this, the maps. So we're going to go into edit mode, where I've got it currently set up to go into source mode, which essentially means we get rid of all the live preview stuff so we can actually see what the front map is all about. And then if we want to scroll down, we'll get here to the maps. Now, there's a few things going on here, so I'll explain what they're doing and some things that we're using, some things we're not, and you might want to use for yourself. So, if you see these hashtags, just know that this is commented out. So essentially what this means is that it's either something that's been used for guidance or potentially just something that we have removed for the moment and we don't want it to be enabled. For example, with our first bits here, the height and width. So if you want to set a particular height and width for your map, you can do that here by all means. I've currently got these disabled at the moment, but if you're going for a particular look, you can do that by all means. And then next, you want to look at the ID. So with the ID, the ID is going to essentially set a way that we can actually call on this in the future. So we know exactly what this one is, because if we want two maps, which are showing two different things, then using the ID is going to allow us to differentiate between those two. Now, I've got a value in here, and what that's basically using is another plugin called Templator, which basically allows us, when we make this note, let's say, for example, if I was to call this Valdian, it will automatically put the name Valdian into the section. If you don't have this, then that's completely fine. You just leave that blank and then just type it in manually when you need it. But it just saves a bit of time. And again, that's what the whole template vault is about, setting up all these different systems together to kind of show you what the Obsidian Vault can do. So then you can kind of take things that you want to use for that. Then moving down, we've got image. So this is the main image for the map, the main map that we're going to be using. Right now, we've got a placeholder image in there. Then below that, we have the image overlay. So this is the things that we can put on top of the map to show different kind of things. Now, 
The one thing that I kind of use this for is like districts. Now I'll kind of show you what it looks like in just a moment. It's really cool because then you can kind of have more visual representation of how you separate certain things in your settlements. Or it could even be territory on a world map so you can kind of see what kingdoms own what land and that kind of stuff. Next, moving on to lock. So that basically just locks the map so we can't accidentally edit things on there when we're moving around. Recentering basically just recenters the map whenever we come back to it. Then when we've got the no scroll zoom, so that's basically just when we're using the mouse wheel to scroll up and down if we want to use that to actually zoom in and out of our maps. Sometimes you don't want that because of the fact that you use that to scroll up and down on your notes. And if you catch your map a bunch, you might find that a little bit frustrating. And then nextly, we have bounds. So bounds is basically just setting the size of the map, which essentially uses the pixels, which can be the height and width of the actual image itself. So the first ones we set as zero, zero. But then for the second set, we set that for the height and width of our maps. Under that, we have then the lat and long, so latitude and longitude, which basically sets the center point for our map. So we know exactly where the center is going to be. Next, we have the different kind of zoom options. So we have the minimum zoom, so the max that we can actually zoom out of, and then the max zoom, how much we can actually zoom in by. The default zoom is basically when we first open up this note, how far are we zoomed in or out? And then the zoom delta is basically how many increments do we move in or out by when we're zooming in and out. Now the unit, unit is essentially what we're measuring in because there's a measuring tool within Leaflet which I'll show off in just a moment. So if you want to set up your map so it's very accurate to the distance that you've currently got on there, you can find out the distance between two settlements for example, so you can calculate the travel time between two places. Scale is the scale of the map itself, so this helps again with the measuring between two different points. So this can vary depending on the size of your map and where you're measuring by. And then lastly, we have the marker tag. So the marker tag allows us to be able to call a note to get it marked onto this map. Now this is really important for what we're doing here today. So I like to use the idea of the tag of map it, then a line, and then whatever we're actually calling this. So for example, I'll probably be calling mine map it line Valdian. So then whenever I want to map something onto Valdian, I know exactly what I'm calling. And saying that, if we move on over now to my Valdian note, you'll be able to see I actually have one set up. So if I go into edit mode, you'll be able to see if I scroll down, all those options we've just gone over, I've currently set up in here. So going back into the view mode, I was to come in here and kind of just zoom in a little bit. I can actually go ahead and, for example, load up the districts overview and you'll see all of a sudden this map that I've currently set up in Photoshop where I've got a bunch of different highlights, you'll be able to see I currently have all my districts marked out. So easier for referencing, which is really nice. And then if I was to shift left click between two different places, you'll be able to see that it starts working out the miles between the two. Now, I don't have the specific distances set up on this one, so this one's going to be a little off, but it's something that you can 100% do. Now, using this method that we're using for the maps now, it is a little bit of trial and error of moving the scale up and down between the two different ones. So you just have to kind of play around with it, bump it down a lot until you find out where it's roughly towards that. And then you kind of just play around until you get to that point. And the way you kind of do that is by using scale references. So for on this map, for example, you can see I've got a zero to 500. If I was to come through here and let's just say set this to 0 0.5, it's probably not going to be accurate. But just to kind of show you the thing, we can see come through here. As you can see, we're at 352. So let's do another quick one. Let's do another uh, 75. And then we'll just see if we're if we're close. Now there are some better ways that we can do this by, see, we're, we're getting close. And if I was to go through that a little more, we'll probably be able to get even closer and closer. But if we was to do a different way for this, what actually happens is it messes around with some of the other functionality that we can do with this map. And that being what we're gonna be looking at right now. So moving on to the main thing that we're looking for is actually plotting stuff onto the maps. So if I was to bring back onto the district map, just so I have a bit of a reference here. And then what we're going to do is zoom into the Gilded Quarters. 
So the Gilded Quarters is an area within my tabletop RPG world, within Valdian, which is basically like a high-end district of like different shops and that kind of stuff. So I want to put a tavern in here. So if I scroll in here, I'm going to do a hold on my shift, on my left shift, and I'm just going to left click once, let's do roughly about here. And then you'll be able to see that it's put some numbers up on the screen. And then on the top right of the screen as well, it says it's copied to my clipboard. That's great, because that's what we're going to need in just a moment. Because now what we can do is go ahead and make a new point of interest or a shop. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually open up the right hand side of my screen here. So this is another part of my template fault. But what I'm going to be looking for is basically one of these buttons which says new point of interest. So when I click on this, it'll give me an option where I can make a new kind of point of interest, either a generic one or a shop. So this is a tavern that we're going to be making here right now. So we're going to use a shop one and it's going to ask us for a name. So I know for this one, it is going to be the bear and bottle. So we're going to head and make that in here. Now this is another template that I have in my template vault, all to do with point of interest and this one specifically, a shop. As you can see, I've got different sections to list out goods and services people that might be in here, different trade partners, all that kind of stuff. So everything that you might need to flesh out a point of interest within your tables or RPG world. But the main thing that we're looking for is up here in our properties. Now, you may have noticed on the left hand side, I've got my properties in here as well, which is something that you can do. So when you have your properties set up, you can actually go ahead and do left control and P. And then if we do properties, you can do the show file properties which actually gives you a separate tab. So if you're like me and don't particularly like the properties at the top of the notes, you can come in there, enable that, and then click hidden. So then it goes and just goes to that. So it makes it a bit cleaner. And like I said, I personally preference this way, but if you don't like it, obviously then you don't need to do that way. But this is where we're looking for right now. So we're not going to focus on actually fleshing out this template because that's not what we're doing here today. We're mainly just looking at getting this plotted on the map. So with this, the first thing that we want to do is getting a tag because that's what we've done to be able to make it so that this gets mapped on the map. So if you remember, we've called it map it, then the line and then Valdian, and then I click enter. So what that's done now is that saying, hey, map. I'm going to map something on you. Listen out for the information I'm going to give you. And because I've mapped these templates out in a way which flows of information, so information that is relevant to each other is there and ready for you. As you'll see underneath, we have location. So the location is a property that's set by the leaflet plugin, which basically looks for information for us to put on. Now, if you remember a few moments ago, we did that left shift and left click on the map, which gave us a point. All we're going to do now is go ahead and control V, so paste it in here, and then this gives us our coordinates. Now, one thing to really know in here, it doesn't like commas and it needs to have these in two different separations. So what we want to do is actually get rid of the second one. So we're going to just copy that to get that a reference for a moment, delete it, and then get rid of the commas at the end. And then we're also going to get rid of that comma at the start. Because again, it doesn't like the comma, so we want to get rid of that. And then we'll click enter. And then what we'll do now after that is we'll go ahead and paste that in again. And then we'll just get rid of the other comma and then click enter. And there we go, that's plotted. It's as simple as that, really. <laughs> and then lastly, we have the map marker. So the map marker is basically just something that we've got set. So if we go into our settings and then scroll down to where we have leaflet. Now, if you don't have that template vault, you might need to set these all manually yourself. On here, you see I've got a bunch of different ones set up here. So you can get an idea of how these markers work. And then you can even set more up by clicking additional markers, setting a name and typing in something like, I don't know, house. And then you can do that kind of stuff. So really cool, really simple to set up. But for this one, it is a tavern. So we're going to set tankard it makes sense for a tavern to have a tankard and then that's basically it all we need to do now is go over to the map we might need to do a quick refresh but it should be there so yeah it's not there at the moment so we're just going to quickly go over to a different note and come back and then there it is zoom in 
And there is the marker. Put the district mark mark on so we can see it. And then we'll hover over it and you can see the bear and bottle already there for us. Now, the point about this is if, again, if Leaflet decides to break at any point, all the information we need is in this note. So, unless you completely get rid of your vault or lose this note, you shouldn't have any problems. If that's the case, then I would question what you've been doing. But at the same point, make a backup. Backups are very important, guys. Um, but one thing about this is compared to being able to like just drag them on this, which is a nice feature, which is really handy at times. Um, you can't actually, if I go in out of lock mode for this one, uh, click off lock, you can't drag this around because it is smacked on the map. Whereas if I was to do it with this one, you can see I can move this around and we can't right click on it. You might see on the top right of the screen. We can't edit it because it is currently defined elsewhere. So it's like the different limitations when it comes to this, but ultimately to actually be able to save all the information within the notes is a lot better. But yeah, guys, as I said, that's really all there is to it. It's that simple. Now that the information lives within our notes, it's less likely that the information will go missing and we'll have a better time for it. So if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and drop a like and a subscribe. And I hope you get some use out of this. If you're interested in other tables of RPG stuff or even Obsidian, highly recommend checking out the rest of my videos as I've got a bunch of stuff that you might be able to use out of. Other than that though, I hope you enjoyed and get something from this. Catch you guys around. Adios. Bye bye.